Whether it's a tablet, TV, cell phone, or gaming system, many would say our kids are being raised by big tech. The average 8 to 12-year-old child spends more than 5 to 7 hours a day online. Susan Lynn is one of the world's leading experts on the world of technology and its impact on children. She has a new book exploring the digital shift, who's raising the kids, big tech, big business, and the lives of children. Soon, Susan joins us. Good morning. Hi. <clears throat> so happy to be with you guys. Let me flash back to the days of uh, baby Einstein videos, and we were all thinking, oh, this is going to educate our children, and we can go make dinner, and yes. they're watching this video. Um, was that educational, or was that a waste of our kids' time, or perhaps even harmful? You know, it's funny that you mentioned baby Einstein, because um, when I was running um, Campaign for Commercial Free Childhood, which is now fair play, we filed a federal trade commission complaint against baby Einstein because there was no evidence that it was um, educational for babies. And there was starting to be increasing evidence that, um, uh, that screen time can be harmful for babies, mm -hmm. except of course, for chatting with the people who love them who are far away. Sure. Yeah. How have you seen screen time incorporated into schools? And, and what are your concerns? What are the red flags that you're seeing right now in terms of education and, and big tech? So one of the things that's happening with big tech is that they're promoting um, what they call personalized learning. Yeah. Which, but that's basically a child at a computer, often without even a teacher, you know, just you know, working on whatever the computer is feeding them at the time. Personalized learning really has to do with the teacher who really knows children and who can help tailor their learning toward their strengths and help them shore up their weaknesses. I mean, technology can't replace human contact for children, and that's what big tech is really trying to do. They're coming between teachers and children, and they're coming between parents and children as well. I mean, personal assistants are being promoted as being able to help kids with uh, uh, homework, for instance, or tell them stories or sing them lullabies. Uh, sure, and you know, you, I, I see a lot of this uh, in the restaurant, the family with the, the six-year-old on a tablet, for, mm -hmm. because for some reason, I guess a six-year-old can't get through dinner in, in an hour without it. What is the harm in that? I mean, at some point, yeah, the tech companies have their responsibility, which we can talk about some more, but the parents have some responsibility as well. Yeah, I think the problem is that um, these devices are being marketed to parents as basically a godsend because they can occupy children. And, and um, they're a way of keeping kids quiet so parents can get other things done. And so, um, but the problem is that what happens is that if you start young children out on screens and hand it hand them to children every every time they're bored <laughs> or cranky, mm -hmm. the kids lose the opportunity to learn how to soothe and amuse themselves. And so, in a way, parents are actually making their lives harder because mm. what they're starting out on is you know a a childhood of constantly yeah. arguing about screen yeah. time. And sometimes it feels like we're so far down the path that it's hard to turn back, uh, you know, just in terms of, you know, they're at school, that sometimes are on screens at school, their friends are on screens. Uh, what would your recommendation be to parents? How do you kind of tr change the trajectory? So one thing is that whatever you're doing, do less. Cut back. <laughs> just try cutting back just a little yeah. even to yeah. start out with. Um, there are, are some families who one day a week put away all of their devices, parents and children, and do something together as a family. And even more important, have, have screen-free family meals. Mm -hmm. Put your devices away when you eat, and then you can help your kids get in the important habit of conversation. Uh, of give I, and take, of sharing what's going on, yes. not just in their day, but in the world. Can I can I ask you? I think I think maybe the the social media companies or, or the tech companies stuff. This would all be a wonderful thing, and we're going to like each other's stuff and, and and all this. And and now we're seeing the downside of all this: the bullying and the judging and so forth and so on. And it's it's like been the wild west of of tech. Does the government need to regulate some of this at all? It's a, it's essential. 
I mean, this is not a, just a family problem. This is a societal problem, and we need to deal with it that way. And, you know, actually, at the moment, there are at least three bills that made it out of committee in the Senate, and some of them have bipartisan support that would limit the ways that big tech can manipulate children. Hmm. The book is who's So, raising? yes, absolutely. Yeah. The, gov the government needs to step in. These company, I mean, it's ironic that when books are being banned, um, states are limiting what teachers and librarians can talk to kids about. A child can go to, a, you know, an unregulated big tech company and ask them anything and get all sorts of information and misinformation. And what kind of society is this? The book is Who's Raising the Kids. For more, check out consumingkids.com. And Susan is on Twitter. Susan, thank you so much for thank joining you, us Susan. this morning. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure.